How do you do, folks? This here is the old mountain man talking at you from the backside of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. Well, I'm going to make this video about, uh, about business, my business, selling these ferro rods, especially on fire starter rods or fire steels as they're more well known. And I've got uh, some that I've been carving handles for. And some of them got the, the M and the M on there for Mountain Man. And they just come in various different shapes and sizes on the handles. And just something you can grab a hold of a bit better. It's whatever design happens to strike me as I'm carving them, then that's what shape it takes for them. But, and it always, you know, to me it always feels good in my hand. Well, I can just, I can get a grip on it better. But some folks like the uh, orange handle ferro rods because you can see those in the dirt a whole lot better. And up against that black shirt of mine, you know, the dirt and the leaves and whatever. But you can paint these any color you want. Because they just come in raw wood or I can uh, burn them black if you want. Take a piece of hot metal and burn them and burn designs in them and whatever. But now for the order and info. I accept postal money orders and postal money orders only because, well, for two reasons. Well, there, there's a few reasons. First of all, it's very convenient for me. I can go into the small town that I live next to and go to that post office, cash the money order, get your order out to you, pay the postage, get it all taken care of in one place, and I don't have to go into Fort Smith looking for some place to cash a MoneyGram or a Western Union money order or some other form of payment. And we all know about checks. Yeah, I had an ex-wife that loved hot checks. So, I'm not saying that people, you know, the YouTube, anyone in the YouTube community is dishonest, but no. Uh, postal money orders are governed by the U.S. government, the federal government, because the U.S. Post Office is a federal institution. This is the legal aspect of it. Your money is protected. When you put your name on the dotted line, on that line, and you put my name down there, that's a contract between you and I. And there are certain laws governing that contract. If I don't fulfill it, if I don't send you goods in return for your money in that money order, then I can get in a lot of trouble. So you're protected two ways. And really so am I. Now, postal money order don't cost anything but maybe a buck, buck fifty. And my ferro rods, the uh, orange handle ones are 15 bucks. The wooden handle ones, since I'm putting in time and money into the adhesives, the two ton epoxy resin, they're going to be 20 bucks. And that's still very a very low price. Take a look around, see if you can find a custom handle or a wooden handle ferro rod that's going to cost you more than 20 I purposely keep an eye on all my competition to keep my prices low so I can make money. I mean, really, isn't that what being in business is about? Is making a little bit of profit so you can have a little extra food on the table? Maybe pay a bill or two? I mean, shoot. Uh, I just got a... I'm on disability. I'm on food stamps. I just got a notice in the mail here the other day that because, well, let's see, I got that. I think I got that notice right here in my pocket. Department of Human Services. 
Division of County Operations. You will see a decrease in your November SNAP or Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program benefits. This reduction is required by federal law. Because the, because the American Recovery Re and Reinvestment Act, temporary, the temporary increase in. On November 1st, 2013, the ARAA increase will end. All SNAP households will experience a cut in their SNAP benefits. This reduction is required by federal law to help the economy recover. Cut the little guy first. Cut them deep. Cut them badly. And I was getting 105 now I've got $95 to eat for the whole month. Yay. Thank you, Mr. President. <sighs> I think I'll have a cigarette on that note. Seems like I can find my papers. Oh, well, I'll just get a cigarette butt. Yeah, I saved my cigarette butts too. Gotta save money any which way I can. Yeah. I was given a couple of pieces of meat here by a very dear relative. My mom. Thanks, mom. Love ya. <laughs> she gave me a couple of steaks. And uh, I hadn't had steak in forever. So, if y'all excuse me for a second, <laughs> I'm gonna get these on. Oh, geez. Oh, Alright, here I is, and whenever you order, I'll send you a big bundle of char cloth, and I pay all the postage, and handling fees, and everything, out of the price, out of the 15 to $20 price, and get that off within 24 to 48 hours, one to two business days. Here, what do I got on my hat? Dang, on it. I swear, I'm trying to keep a de my decent hat and decent shape out here. That's a mess. But I figured I'd just have a little coffee, cook a little breakfast, talk a little business, and maybe a little bit of survival. Uh, yeah, it is tough. I know it's tough all over for the working folks and for us folks that are less fortunate. Now, in 1996, I was a worker. You know, I've been working in uh, factories and chicken plants and uh, hauling hay, busting firewood, doing whatever I could do when I was younger. Now, I'm 46 years old. You might not believe that looking at this younger looking face without all them whiskers, but yeah, I'm 46. Got a little edge there on staying young, and it sure ain't the genetics in my family. Preventative herbal medicine, and I'll talk about that in another video later on. But, at any rate, in 96, I was married. You know, I got married in 93 to my first wife. Darling woman starting out. This ain't about her. This is about my work history. 
I was working in a factory, a furniture factory that produced futon sofas. And in those futon sofas was cotton ticking, as they call it, or stuffing to make it a little more plain. And that cotton stuffing came in 250 pound bundles. I was working back there in the back. I was helping the fellas, you know, guide in the the forklift driver. Uh, one guy was on one side, one guy was on the other, and we was kind of keeping him straight there together because he couldn't see around those bundles. They were sitting on the forks, and he had to have two guys guiding him in to the stack. And he would shake the forklift, he'd pull it forward and back, causing it to shake a little, and roll those bundles off. Well, that stack got kind of high, and someone hollered at me one way, and I looked, and someone hollered, look out the other way, and I looked back the other way, and before I knew it, a uh, bundle of cotton landed on my left shoulder, pinned me to the floor. You know, I looked up just in time to see that nothing but brown paper wrapping around a huge 250-pound bundle of cotton, you know, so big around and just and about eight feet long. Next thing I know, four men are pulling that bundle of cotton off of me, lifting it up and moving it over. Two men on each end. <coughs> I sprang up off the floor. Everybody thought I was all right, but you know, adrenaline will do that to you. You won't feel it until the next day, maybe, well, some, sometimes hours, sometimes days. But the next day I was soaking in a tub of hot water and trying to loosen up those muscles because I was all, I had slept kind of odd and I was all, you know, tensed up tore up and I'm trying to force my arms to move to where I can work the faucet handles in the bathroom and I laid there in the tub of really hot water for a good long time loosen up to where I could get moving well it, that was about two weeks of that and I lost my job. I couldn't make it to work a whole lot. Couldn't afford a chiropractor. Couldn't afford much in the line of medical treatment. And the case really wasn't that well documented. I went to see the, you know, they didn't even have a nurse in that factory. They didn't have much of anything. And they sure didn't want to pay out. Of course, any working man out there knows, any working man or woman out there knows how that goes. So I basically got screwed. And they didn't even let me smoke a cigarette afterwards. Bad medicine. Bad luck, as it were. Bad medicine, that's a Native American saying. But, you know, it's one of those things that happens. You see this this ring here, that was a gift. And this was a gift. I couldn't afford nothing like this on my own. And these are gifts from years ago. Yeah, most of my jewelry, I make it myself. And, you know, I got my lighter and my neck knife hanging there. And this bear claw here was a gift from a woman that I lived with in 2010. Yeah, still think about her from time to time. Uh, you know, working, trying to make it. It's a tough thing to do. And I live out here in the boonies now. I don't have a vehicle or any way to get around. Never had a driver's license. Um, I came up with this idea, and it's thanks to the Hoss USMC and people like Jayhawk USMCR that have helped me out. But the Hoss, he jump started this whole thing for me with my on my old channel mountain man 1477 or 1477 whichever it was it seems like a lifetime ago but it was just a few months ago 
And now here I got this new channel. Now Man 1478. And the house has befriended me once again. And uh, I have yet to get a gift out to him. But Hoss, I just found you a knife that I, I had one that I was going to send you. But it got stolen. And I'm going to be getting another blade out to you just as soon as possible. I replaced it. Found it on eBay. Wasn't too much either. It's a pretty dang good knife too. And every Marine needs a knife. You know. And it's a heck of a thing. And I owe you know, so much to so many here. You know, if nothing more than a thank you. You know, to my subscribers have sent me gifts of material objects that I need, supplies, you know, like uh, toothpaste and, you know, well, I don't really use the regular store brand toothpaste. I use just plain baking soda, but you can use toothpaste for other things. Coffee and things like that were sent to me. As well as some cash here and there where folks could spare it. And that is greatly appreciated. Looks like little bears are looking around for something. What's up, buddy? Well, get him. <laughs> here he comes. What's up, bub bub? Oh, you smelling them plastic things that that meat was in? Well, if, uh, you know, and to my new subscribers, I sure thank y'all for the support. Those of you who were sent my way by Jayhawk USMCR and all the others, I appreciate you. Thank you much. Um, what you doing there, buddy? <laughs> And Little Bear appreciates you too. He got some some milk bone dog biscuits for the long, for the first time in the longest time, and he's been a happy camper for a little bit. <laughs> Went to the Dollar General and got him some, a bulk bag of beef flavored dog biscuits, and he just loves those things. He loves those more than he loves the milk bones. He got a little box of those medium sized milk bones at the Dollar General too. Yeah. He likes that stuff. He just likes something different, something extra. Now, he's my buddy. You gotta get him something, even if it is from the Dollar General, you know. As long as he likes it, he don't care. Isn't that right, little bear? Hmm? Isn't that right, little bear? Hey, stick your head up here for him. What you think? What you think? Can you say thank you to the folks? Hmm? Can you say thank you? Say no. There, he said thank you. <laughs> With a little prompting from the old, from the old mountain man. He's a pretty good pup. Had him a long time since he was just a baby. He's my bottle fed baby. Had him since the night he was born. He was the runt. He nearly froze to death, but I brought him in, revived him, bottle fed him, raised him all on my own. And he's the most loyal, faithful critter in the world. Isn't that right, buddy? Well, this here is the old mountain man. I'm signing off. From the back side of this here leg and reminding you, try to be good to each other and be good to yourselves. And watch out for those wolves in sheep's clothing. They'll try to pull the wool over your eyes and cut your food stamps. And yeah, that is if you're really in need of them. Uh, I don't know. It's began to be a sh it's a real shame what's happening to this great nation of ours and the way the 
folks are being hurt. I'm not sure appreciate any help y'all can give. Business or otherwise. Uh, I'm also into bartering and trading. Y'all take care and try to stay on the positive side. I'm sure trying. This is the old mountain man signing off for now. Bidding y'all a good day and adios. Back in the ocean.